Hello, this is Yummy Pajama Man, and today I will be redoing the first video and uh, do a couple of updates in the first video. So uh, let's start with uh, what was I going to do? We can do to go to the start. I'm actually going to first off. I'm going to uninstall my Python, and then I'm going to reinstall it so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing for, for the whole process. So. Let's go to start and then I'll probably go to my all program and there should be a folder if you have Python like an older version it's gonna say like Python 3.1 or 3.2 whatever whatever just click on that folder if you already have one and you're just here to update <coughs> your 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 Python GUI so what you can do is click on this folder and then un uninstall Python right here so I'll uninstall are you sure you want to uninstall this product yes so I will uninstall Python from my computer and that's one way to uninstall it. You can uninstall Python uh, just going through your computer yourself and finding where you put all the files in your computer and then you can uninstall from there. But I find it quicker the way that I showed you so you can do it as well. If you're using a Mac, uh, obviously, obviously I don't know how to uninstall that from a Mac because I'm using a Windows so you'll have to figure that yourself if you're using a Mac. If you're using Unix or Linux, I don't know as well. You gotta figure that out yourself. So I'm gonna uninstall and uh, and wait until this is done. Okay, so now that you and I especially uninstalled Python entirely, and maybe you don't want to un uninstall it, you're just here to install it all together. So now we're gonna learn how to install Python onto your computer. So you want to go to www.python.org and then you'll come up to this page, the home page. And then excuse me, then you want to go to download. And then it'll give you the recent Python version, which is 3.3.2. If you're looking at this 6 from 6 months from now, a year, 2 years, the numbers will be different. But as long as it's Python 3. Point whatever, whatever, this video will still work for you guys. Uh, I'm I'm guaranteeing like 95% of the time. If it goes to Python 4, I'll have to restart the whole th series and do it all all over again with Python 4. But for now, I'm using Python 3.3.2, which is the latest edition. So if you guys use Windows, I use I use Windows. I use a 32-bit architecture on my computer so I'm going to click on this one right here an x86 Microsoft installer installer okay if you use a 64-bit processor on your computer install the one below it okay if you have a Windows 64-bit then use this installer right here you'll get the 32-bit installer as well but if you use a 64-bit processor use this one okay in order to determine that you use either a 32-bit or 64-bit bit processor, go to your start, right-click on computers, go to properties, and you'll see all my specs. To find what your, well, you can see it right here, system type minus 32-bit operating system. If you use Windows 7, it should be the same, similar to this. Uh, Windows 8, I don't know, Jesus, Windows 8, 32-bit, mine's 32-bit, yours might be 64, this is how you find your processor. So corresponding to that, if you have a 64-bit, use this one, if, uh, if you have a 32-bit, use this one on Windows. If you have a Mac, okay, your Mac's called Mac OS X, that's the name of your operating system, you got a 64-bit slash 32-bit right here, okay, if you have a 64-bit, then use this one, if you only have a 32-bit, only use this one, okay? It's the same applies. For Linux, Unix, or Mac OS X, you can use either the bit zip or the X zipped. I don't know what the difference between these two because I don't use Linux, Unix, or Mac OS, so we can just skip that. So I'm guessing most of you guys are going to use Windows, so if you have a 32 bit, click on this, 64 bit, click on this instead, okay? So I have a 32 bit processor, so I'm going to click on the MSI installer. And it's going to download 
the installer on my computer so we'll wait on that so the Python dash 3.3.2 you might be using a later edition use that one instead use the latest stable edition okay so it'll download that and almost done so wherever you get this this might be on your download file so you can go to download recent download and you can find it there I have mine on Chrome so that's why I'm able to open it up and do you want to run this file run yeah so it's preparing to install select whether to install blah 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 go to next because I don't have an option and it's going to select a directory it's going to create a folder in my under my C drive and then the folder name Python 33 it's going to install everything in this folder so yeah I want it on my C drive if you want it somewhere else then obviously you you put in the path that you want it to, to be in customize Python 3.3.2 if you can include features uh, I usually include everything except for python.exe um, let's try it with exe it will be installed on local hard drive entire feature will be installed on local hard drive yeah, so I want to include that because it'll be easier to access Python, the the GUI altogether. So you want everything, yes. And this allows you to type Python into command prompt without needing the full path. You can also do that. That's pretty handy. And so go to next. Now it's installing Python 3.3.2. Everything. So this will take several minutes. So if I've completed the Python 3.3.2 installer and it's saying thanks and then you want to click finish to get out of the prompt. So if you've already done that and now it's going to refresh my my uh, home page so I'll wait for that and then I'll go into actually putting the shortcut onto your desk desktop. Oh, there we go. So now everything is refreshing. So, okay. So to put the shortcut on your desktop, so you want to go to Start and then go to the folder, or I'll go to All All Programs and then I'll open up my previous or the one that I've installed. So you can go through it here, Python 3.3, or you can go through it through your computer, and then look through it on your file path. So I'm going to do it through here, Python 3.3. Click on the folder and you want to drag idle python GUI out because we're going to use a graphical user interface to type out all of our code so if I remember this correctly I think I just yeah drag this out you get a little arrow saying move to desktop so that's good so or you can copy it so I'll, I'll do copy by holding down control to change the copy to desktop so I'll move it up here and it should work. So now we have a copy of the icon, the desktop, or the Python on the desktop. So let's open up Python and make sure everything works on your computer. And it should open. And the uh, first time is a little slow. So, okay, so now we're in the shell of Python. So what the shell is, Python 3.3.2 shell, this is where you can, you know, do your testing you can do like 7 plus 3 and then it'll give you an output automatically 10 you don't have to do all the save file etc etc you can test out the code this way you can do arithmetic arithmetics 5 minus 3 you get 2 etc etc it should work if it doesn't work you'll have to reinstall it but it should work 99 percent of the time so it works right now under the shell so you guys obviously should know what file is. You get a new window, open recent files, and you don't have to worry about these three. Save, save as, save copy as, print window. You can print the whole thing. Close, exit. You can do editing. I don't use that a lot. I usually use the shortcuts, like the undo. I usually use control Z to undo a lot. And then the shell, we can restart the shell here. So I can restart the shell. I've restarted the shell. And I don't use debugger too much options you can configure idle so let's go into configure you can 
you can have your idle preference here you can change the fonts tabs the highlights in the code uh, the key binding I don't use that much and general I don't use that much Usually, what I use is the font face right here and then I can just change my font if I want to but I usually use courier and then the size you can change the size of your font you can make it bold and uh, you can give it an automatic automatic indentation which I will go over later on so this will make sense later on so this is what I use to change my fonts and my size etc etc this is just the idle preference if you want to change what is what everything looks like to you so that's it for Python you can do you can do you can go to file do new window so now you're in a another GUI where you can actually type out the code so this is where you're going to type out the code and save it as a dot py so this is your source code page this is your shell where you can test out your code this is your source code page where you will actually be writing out the source code and saving it from time to time and oops, I didn't forget anything and that's it so uh, as, a, as a disclaimer before I go um, I'm teaching the fundamentals of Python okay maybe I will get into GUI on how to program in GUI I will do the very basics of GUI of graphical user interface like in my 50th to 100th video maybe I'll start in my 100th video okay don't expect me to go into GUI like after the third video that will never happen okay I'm teaching the fundamentals and the fundamentals take time to teach if you go straight into GUI programming I guarantee you you will fail okay you will fail there's no way you can you can program in GUI without first knowing the fundamentals of Python okay I'm saying this because I get so many uh, messages asking me why I'm not going into GUI programming yet I can't I have to teach the fundamentals first before we can go into GUI programming it's like building a house without the foundation it'll crumble okay you can't produce anything good without knowing the fundamentals first okay and that's it that's my disclaimer okay if you want to go into GUI you can go you can download RPG maker or something like that see I have a GUI down here I have uh, crisis uh, the cry the cry engine that's where I can make my uh, crisis game you can do that you don't have to do programming in GUI if you want to go straight into GUI just download RPG maker download an application you can make GUI from programming but you have to learn the fundamentals first okay this is gonna take a long time you can't you can't program in GUI like in a month okay it's not gonna happen you have to have patience okay so that's just my disclaimer please go away if you have that expectation for me because that's not what I'm gonna do it really pisses me off okay I will I will like eventually get there you know but some some for some reason people have high expectation and they want to get into GUI programming after the third tutorial and it really pisses me off so it's just a disclaimer that's all so but if you're here for the fundamentals then great you're in the right place and you're gonna learn a lot about the fundamentals of Python so that'll be fun before I go I just want to mention that I am not doing this to get uh, more views or more subscribers I'm not doing this to become famous I'm not doing this to get favorites I'm not doing this to get likes I'm doing this because this is just programming is what makes me passionate and I want to share that knowledge with everyone else in programming and it, it it is a hard field to get into and I want it and I want to alleviate that uh, that roadblock for you guys and I want to share the passion of programming with you guys I want to help each and every individual who uh, who happen to see this video I want to help you directly if I can and if you always have questions about programming uh, don't be afraid just ask me um, no questions are dumb I will always answer 
um, and I want to help you become a better programmer okay that's my my passion okay that's that's why that's why I'm doing this I'm not doing it for views you know I'm doing it for you guys I want you guys to succeed and not only Python programming but I'll also be teaching about how to think for yourself as well okay I hope I can do that for you I hope you can let me help you Okay.